2020 C8 Corvette Stingray. The one thing no one seems to be talking about. So as most of you know, in the last day or two, there's been lots of hype and excitement and fanfare regarding the unveiling of the new Corvette C8. So now for the first time in 67 years of Corvette lineage, we now have a mid-engine Corvette. As some of you know or have heard from all that Chevrolet has been promoting here in the last few days as that the mid-engine Corvette has been in the works for many, many years and they plan to bring it in with the C5 and then they pushed it back to the C6, then pushed it back to C7 and now here we are at C8 and we finally have the mid-engine Corvette. Everyone's raving about the power numbers and the 0-60 to 60 times and the base price of under $60,000 and all these great merits that they're touting about, but no one has talked about the one thing that popped into my mind almost instantaneously when they said we're going mid-engine with the Corvette, which is service and maintenance and repair. I know a lot of you are first-time viewers and you're wondering why this bearded Subaru guy is trying to talk about Corvettes to you. Well, I'm a five-time Corvette owner. Uh, over the span of about six, seven years, I've owned five Corvettes, two C5 Coupes, one C5 Convertible, and two C5 Z06s, one of which was a 50th anniversary. So I've got quite a bit of uh, experience with owning, driving, and maintaining, and working on, and hot rodding uh, Corvettes. I also have quite a bit of understanding of the LS architecture V8s because I've owned about nine F bodies, uh, a GTO, a G8 GT, the five Corvettes. I had a Joe Gibbs Silverado, a few other Silverados with the 5.3, which as we all know is the LS architecture small block. So I've been in them, I've worked on them, I know a bit about them. So I'm not just some weird Subaru guy spouting off his opinion about the new Corvette. I've been a Corvette owner, so I believe I've got a little bit of leeway in voicing my opinion on it. So back to my initial point, the big thing that no one is talking about right now with the new C8 Corvette is repair, maintenance, and service for this car. All of the previous Corvettes have been fairly simple to work on due to it being a conventional front engine two-seater sports car. I know in the C5 generation when they moved the transmission to the rear and put the transaxle in there, uh, working on the clutch transmission system, torque converter, etc. for the automatics became much more of a hassle seeing as how you basically had to drop the drivetrain out or have lots of special mounts to hold the engine and drivetrain in place when you pulled the transaxle and the torque tube down. So it wasn't exactly 100% friendly to work on, but it wasn't terrible either. Moving to this new mid-engine design, looking at the cutaways and the virtual um, layout that they've given during the unveiling and other media that they have released, Chevrolet's released, um, it looks like a lot of the engine is buried. There's a lot of the actual structure of the frame of the car coming over the front of the engine. We have the rear trunk, which I'm sure will be pretty easy to remove to access the rear of the engine and transmission, so that shouldn't be too terribly difficult to access. But looking from the sides and the way that the engine bay and the hatch is laid out, it's pretty cramped and everything looks pretty buried. So normal services like spark plug replacement, serpentine belt replacement, uh, a water pump replacement, things like that are going to be, I can only assume, much more expensive with the C8 compared to all the other Corvettes before it because of the amount of labor that's going to be involved to get to those parts with the engine being now in a mid-engine uh, configuration compared to where it was in the front engine. In the C5, C6, C7, water pump was easily accessible at the front of the engine as well as all the belt drive, accessories, AC compressor, power steering pump, spark plugs relatively easy to replace especially compared to the LSF bodies, although they weren't terrible either. You pop the coil packs off and you got plenty of room to get down there to them. But anyway, this is getting into like Ferrari Lamborghini type service where 
probably a lot of this is going to be an engine transmission full dropout to service certain components on this vehicle. Uh, most Ferraris, to service their timing belt, have an access in the bulkhead behind the front seats. You pull the front seats out. Well, I say front seats, it's only seats in the car. You pull the seats out, pull the carpet out, and there is an access cover through the bulkhead to the front of the engine. Well, looking at the design of the Corvette C8 and the schematics and diagrams that they've shown with the, what did they call it, the, um, the uh, basically the raised portion down the center of the chassis that used to house the torque tube, uh, I believe they called it something backbone or something. But anyway, the way that's laid out, it looks like there's no way to get an access cover to the front of the engine with it in the car. They may have small access covers to either side of that center tunnel, but I don't know, and I don't really know who knows other than GM executives and engineers and that. But, uh, you know, just looking from a maintenance perspective and from talking to GM techs that were former Snap-on customers and uh, acquaintances of mine, they're kind of uh, shaking right now thinking about how difficult it's going to be to work on these things. Um, you know, they're... Most likely GM has thought of a lot of this, but then again, as any other technician or anyone that works on modern vehicles knows, most of the time they slam these things together, engineer them to go together quick and run and operate effectively and safely. But when it comes to service and repair, it's kind of, uh, y'all can figure it out after we got the car put together. You're gonna need all these specialty tools and you're gonna have to twist yourself into a pretzel to contort yourself to get a lot of this stuff replaced. That's just been the way it's been for quite a while now. So most likely GM thought of this and there are access panels underneath the engine where you can service spark plugs, ignition coils, spark plug wires, uh, serpentine belt, etc. But then, you know, there's other components that doesn't look like there's any way that you're gonna be able to service it without dropping out the engine. Uh, say cylinder heads, um, the direct inject system for the fuel injectors, uh, high pressure fuel pump, most of that stuff's probably gonna be inaccessible from the top. Um, what else? Uh, the timing chain. I know it's not a normal service component on the LTLS architecture engines, but still it'll be uh, probably pretty impossible to access it while the engine's in the car. Uh, the mounting of the water pump, I don't see how that can be replaced in car. The way that the top of the engine is shrouded by the uh, braces that come back over top of it, Looks like there's no access to access the water pump from above. Uh, as high as it's mounted on the engine, I doubt you could get it from below. Unless there's an access panel on the passenger side bulkhead to get in there to access that water pump, which still that'd be limited access. I don't know how you'd change a water pump on this new Corvette without dropping out the engine and transmission. So that's the big thing now. Are you guys ready for the sticker shock of these new repair bills and this new higher warranty time? I can only assume is gonna come with this new mid-engine layout. Also, new technologies that are coming into this car that GM has not put into a car, uh, like the DCT, this new dual clutch transmission, I foresee giving issues. It's a first year. Yes, they've done testing on the track. Yes, they've done street testing for a few years with the camouflage cars, but still, you don't get it 100% perfect before it goes into mass production and gets out in the real world. So that's going to be expensive. If you've looked into Ferrari, Lamborghini, or other exotics with these systems, the clutches are very expensive and anything related to the transmission is expensive and the labor is very expensive on them as well. It might be a little easier to, you know, to um, service being that the transmission is the rear of the drivetrain and it would probably be pretty accessible to pull independent of the engine, but still there's going to be a lot of work involved and the computer control system for the dual clutch system. I'm sure there's going to be lots of uh, software updates once they get these cars out on the road after a while. And, uh, you know, just going to be general trouble to work out the bugs the first couple years with any new model change. Uh, I see another issue that's going to probably prop up on these C8s is overheating. Again, they've tested them on the track, they've tested them on the street, but they haven't been mass produced and put out in the real world yet. The same thing happened with the Z06, and as most of you know, in the Corvette community, there were overheating issues with the last Z06s, and there were lawsuits against GM over the overheating of the Z06s. The layout of the new C8, the rear bumper, 
the heat extractors under the tail lights look extremely small. Those vents to get the heat out of the engine compartment look very small. When you compare them to Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and other mid-engine exotics, they have very large grills to extract as much heat from the engine compartment as they can. And the Corvette just looks like it's very stopped up and doesn't get a ton of airflow through it with the uh, intakes there in the doors, uh, above on either side of the hatch, and then the exit there under the tail lights. <clears throat> I do know there are, what, at least four radiators on the new C8. I believe there's one on either side of the front bumper, uh, one on either side of the door scoops, and I'm sure there's probably more coolers for the transmission uh, and oil along with the coolant. So you got to take into consideration all this stuff. I mean, just changing the radiators, if those rear mounted radiators, that's going to be removing body panels and everything to get to them. Uh, bleeding the coolant system of air, that's probably going to be a pain. Anyone that had a Fiero, <laughs> I owned every single year model Pontiac Fiero. I still own two today. It's pretty much a pain to get the air out of the cooling system with the front mounted radiator, rear mounted engine, and the uh, coolant pipes that ran uh, by the chassis. I know a lot of you guys are probably going to hate on me because I keep comparing the new Corvette to Ferrari and Lamborghini when it comes to cost of service and maintenance, but you know, it's kind of uh, more of an apples to apples comparison than it was just last generation. Uh, the fact that we've got the engine in the rear now is going to greatly increase labor on a lot of services and uh, accessibility to the engine is going to be greatly reduced compared to the front engine layout. So again, I'm not taking shots at the C8 Corvette. I'm not you know, disparaging anyone that goes and buys one. I'm not saying, you know, not to go buy one. I'm just saying that people have not talked about this and this is just the technician in me. That's the first thing I went to is how much is that gonna cost to repair? How hard is that gonna be to repair? You know, things that most people don't think about. They, that shiny new fast toy, I'm gonna go out and get it. And, you know, as long as the warranty's there, you're fine. You know, you're not gonna have to worry about this cost, but a couple years go by, your warranty's gone and you have to start paying out of pocket for these repairs, they're gonna be much more expensive than your C6, C5, and C7. You know, while we're on the subject of more difficult to repair and service, uh, it's probably gonna be more difficult modifying your Corvette. Uh, think about it, if you wanna put a big hot cam in that LT2, you're gonna to have to drop out that engine. You want to upgrade your clutch, more than likely you can pull the DCT out without having to drop the whole drivetrain. It might actually be a little easier to remove than a traditional transaxle in the C5, 6, 7s uh, due to the fact that it's the rearmost part of the vehicle and it appeared there were like five or eight fasteners and uh, the CV axles would come out for the rear and your bell housing bolts, probably a few lines, wiring harnesses and probably would come right out. It's probably actually a little more easy to work on. That said, uh, will there be upgrade performance clutches for these cars? How hard will the tuning be to get the DCT system uh, acquainted with these higher performance clutches? And you know, getting the engagement points right, getting the shift points right, changing all of this stuff is a lot more difficult than when you had your C5, six, and seven cars, and you just threw you know a stage three clutch in there and uh, your foot was the variance in learning that new clutch. Now you're gonna have to tune your transmission control module to learn this new stiffer clutch, vary the amount of uh, pressures to engage and release this clutch. You know, there's a lot more things to think about here. In the release, we heard GM talk about open air, over the air updates for the car. Uh, if you go out and tune your car, for a bigger cam, nitrous, et cetera. Can GM put an over the air update into your car and erase your custom tune? Can GM go in and void your warranty for these open air integrations into the PCM? What will this spell for the future of Corvette owners and modifying their vehicles? We really don't know yet. I'm sure there will be a workaround for it. In years past, uh, guys that want to go fast have always found a workaround for any kind of roadblock in their way. Uh, I totally understand guys wanting to soup up their Corvettes. I was one, every single one of my Corvettes was modified, none of them were stock. You know, headers, exhaust, cams, upgraded valve train, nitrous, cold air intakes, 
all that good stuff. But, um, you know, that's another thing to think about, these uh, over-the-air uh, updates that they spoke about. How will that affect the car and your ownership? So, not sure how many of you actually stuck through this and listened to me talk about the C8 Corvette and my thoughts and feelings on how it's going to change ownership and how it's going to affect service warranty and repair costs and also modification costs. What are your thoughts and feelings on this? Do you think I'm crazy, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about, and you're not going to listen to me and hate on me in the comments and thumb down this video? Do you think I have some valid points that have not really been talked about or discussed yet? Uh, what are your thoughts and feelings? Leave them in the comments below and uh, let's have a discussion. See what you guys are thinking about the Corvette, things you might not even cross your mind yet about the Corvette C8. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.